Thank you, Vic. Um, so let me add that this is going to be a joint work with I want to tell you. Um, and I promise to define all the terms in the title. But before that, let's start with just some very basic facts about all of us, just in case to make sure we're all on the same page. So Polydog is the complex hollow fine to many points. And here you can see some examples in dimension two and three. A very important example for this talk is a simplex. So simplex is the simplest polygon possible. It's the complex hull of affine independent points in the equivalent space. So for instance, the triangle is a simplex. And so is the center kinder. And you can imagine how it goes in higher dimensions. And then for this talk, we're going to kind of talk about generalizations of simplicial and simple polygons. So polydog is called simplicial if all of its properties, which will be defined on the next slide, if all of them are simplicist. So for instance, the simplex itself is always simplicial. Uh, the hither is simplicial. There are many others. So polydog with duality, we can also define the notion of a simple polydog. So polydog is called simple if it's dual is okay, So the cube is the dual of of the hidden. So cube is simple. This three-dimensional polydog is also simple. So it's about to like to like the count. So what can you count in this case? So there are many things to count when you have a polydog. But so for this stuff, we will be interested in the case numbers. So to define the phase numbers, let's first um, think about what the dimensional topology is. So the dimensional topology is just the dimension of the complex hull. And the phase of the polytop is the intersection of a polytop in supporting hyperplane. So a hyperplane that has all points of the polytop on one side. It's not hard to see that a phase of any polytope is again a polytope. So we can again talk about the dimension of the phase. And uh, it sounds obvious from the pictures, but actually requires some proof. In any case, it's well known that a polytope always has five dimensions. So we can really count them. So if a given the number of i, they can ask how many i dimensional cases are known to pass. We usually denote that number by f sub i, and we usually also arrange them in a vector which is called the f vector. Okay, so what do we know about the f vectors of polygons? And yes, the most important theorem now at the moment on the subject is the g theorem. This theorem provides a complete characterization of all possible F factors that superficial polygons can have. So it's a characterization. So it gives some conditions. So you give me a proposed integer vector. I can run it through those conditions and tell you if there is such a polygon. And so as any characterization, it has two parts. Necessity of conditions and sufficiency of conditions. Necessity of conditions was proved by Richard, uh, and sufficiency was proved by Mutulara and Carl Lee. And that's one full figure. And of course, by duality, we can also use it for simple polygons. But then you can ask, well, what's known for polygons that are non simulation and non simple? And the answer is, well, in dimension three, uh, more than 100 years ago, science provided a different definition. In dimension four, we already know where the molecule is, and in particular, there is no human conjectural characteristic. Okay, so what do you do if almost nothing is known? Well, so one thing we can try is. Maybe if we find some family of polytops 
that has properties of both superficial and simple polygons, then maybe we have a better chance. Okay, and so let me try to define a generalization of superficial and generalization of a simple if they'll have a invariant with some new parameter. Uh, involved. So to introduce that parameter, so let's think again what superficial and simple means. So simplicial means that all cases are simplex, right? The case of the simplex is the simplex. So it's enough to require that every polydimensional case, also known as a maxim, is a simplex. Meaning that so it's a case of dimension d minus one to be a simplex, it's equivalent to that case having d vertices. So if all a dimensional polygon is simplicial if every Passive has exactly D process. Now, so let's apply duality. So, simplicial becomes simple. D minus one cases become zero dimensional cases of vertices. Uh, vertices become passives. So, you can dualize that statement. You know, think that a D dimensional polygon is simple if every vertex is an exactly D passive. Okay, so now let's take any uh, I mean, between I and between one and D minus one, and let's try to define the notion of being I superficial and the notion of being I superficial. So D dimensional polygon is called I superficial if all faces of the dimensional I are superficial. So if every I dimensional face has I plus one vertices. What happens in higher dimensions, we don't care, but at least up to dimension i, everything is assumed. Well, so to define i simple, let's just dualize the notion of y simply show. And so what we get is that a d dimensional polygon is i simple if every d minus i minus one dimensional case lies in exactly i plus one plus. <laughs> Okay, so let's try. So on the next page, we will see some examples. But for now, let's just try to play a little bit with what that says. So for instance, what happens if i is 1? So we are saying that our polygon is 1 simplicial if every one dimensional case, so an edge, has two vertices. Right? So that always happens. So every polygon is 1 simple. What does it mean to be one simple? Well, so now we need that every d minus two dimensional case for every each is an exactly two passes. Well, that also happens. So every polytope is also one simple. Okay, so let's think what I think just plain simplicial means in this terminology. So plain simplicial means that your d minus one simplicial. And being simple just means that you know d minus one simple, right? Because if I is d minus one, then here I precisely get that every zero phase isn't exactly d passes. Okay, so these are the first two alterations on this slide. Let me add a few more. So if we want things to be both J simplicial and I simple. What can we say about J and I? Well, so a simplex is both D minus I simplicial and D minus one simple. <laughs> Two dimensional polygon is also both simple and simplicial. So, okay, but the, so the moment D becomes at least three and P is not a simplex, if we know that our P is both J simplicial and I simple, and it's not that hard to check that J plus I can never be more than D. So this means that and the most interesting case is when J plus I is D. And that's what they're going to have to do. Well, so how does it relate to F vectors? So another example. So what does it mean for a four dimensional polygon to be too simple or too simple? Well, so to be too simplicial, every two dimensional case must be a fine. Well, to be too simple, every edge must be three passes. Maybe that's not that we can check. But it turns out that in this case, 
thing to simply go to symbolize and create the other to say that all two faces are triangles and the F factor is symmetric. So it looks like a miracle, but that's what happens. And then the main, so in this talk, I'm not actually going to talk anymore about phase numbers. Instead, and to study phase numbers of those things, we first need to understand the existence. Yes. So this talk will be about the existence of such homodox. So the main question is well, so if I is one and d minus one, yeah, the plate of such homodox. So let's pick some i between two and d minus two. And so the main question we want to ask is can we find a polydimensional polydoc that's rather simplex and that simultaneously the d minus i to which of and i. And if we can find one such polydoc, we can become greedy and ask are there infinite families of such polydoc? And so it will tell you what we know. So let's start with um, what was known, and let's start with the cases of small i. So i is equal to two, or i is equal to two. So when i is equal to two, there was a series of papers by Epstein, Cooper, Verbi, Fiedler, Platon, Holt, Ziegler, and um, Platon, Holt, Werner. And so they, what they proved is that there are two exists so for every d starting with four and up. These are the only interesting cases. So D should get it for. There do exist infinite families of D minus two superficial to simple D dimensional form. So they have several constructions. So that's what happens when I is two. Now, when I is three, things become more complicated in the sense that essentially they have a couple of examples. Okay, so what are they? So uh, there is a nice polygon called D e demicube. It's also sometimes called half cube. So what is that? So you start with a uh, cube, and let's imagine it's a zero, one, two, four, eight. So all coordinates are zeros and ones. So for each vertex, you can compute the sum of coordinates, and it's a number which is either or the even. So let's look only at the vertices where the sum is even. So imagine that this is the origin. Uh, these are the two vertices. Well, of course, yeah. And so you take out the convex hull of those blue vertices. Just you can draw your fundamental pictures. Not that interesting. What you get in this case is a simplex. But actually, from this fact, it follows that general dimension D. D dynamic cube is always free simple show and D minus free simple. And this will be one for later, but this polydoc always has some facets that are synthesis. You can see that because you can imagine obtaining a polydoc by truncating all polyn vertices and truncating each such project gives us a simple fact. Okay, and of course, if you dualize and look at the dual of the dimensional density, the result is e minus three c which are pretty simple, and it has vertices of degree d, and I'm going to call such vertices simple vertices. So not all of them are like that, but there are two e minus one. Okay, so what happens if I is four? So here, not just that we have finitely many examples in each dimension, we only have examples in dimensions up to, up to A. And so the construction comes uh, from reflection groups and what's it called polydots. So actually, I should mention that some of the so for instance, that is also like that. And some of the constructions for two simple D minus two simple polydots is also that. So what are those polydops? So they come from fine interflection groups. They depend on three parameters, R, S, and T. Those parameters should satisfy some conditions. So probably the most significant condition is that when we prove to be finite, this sum should be strictly larger than that. 
And so what you get is a polar dope of MOTD. So I didn't tell you how to construct the polar dope, but the recession of production, it reduces the polar dope of the MOTD, that is the sum of those three parameters plus one. And why is it important for us? Because McMullen observed that these polar dopes are always R plus two superficial, that's plus T minus one symbol. And you can check that the sum of those two things is precisely the dimension, so that's the case that you can see. Unfortunately, so if you want something to be more superficial, let's say because of R, then R should be two. So that means that here I have one third, and so for this sum, for the total sum to be larger than one, that's what's here, pretty restricted. And so that's where the uh, restriction that D is a plus A. But then in any case, so this gives us some additional examples. So for example, if you look at parameters two, four, and one, you can check that they satisfy the conditions. <laughs> and what you get is a force of the show for sense of a polygon. And of course, the dual of that object is also a force of which symbol. And similarly, if you look at parameters two, three, and one, you have a force of which of three symbol seven dimension pole. And these are essentially all non examples. So, for instance, we still don't know if there exists. Polydog that's not a simplex, so 10 dimensional polydog that's five simplex. Okay, so let, let me tell you about our results. So, our results are for, so in the beginning, we were trying to construct the infant panelists of such things, and I will tell you what we succeeded. But so, to construct those polydogs, uh, we needed to introduce a new operation, which we call the merging operation. And it's kind of modeled on the notion of connected sum. So, it will resemble connected sum. However, the definition is pretty complicated. So, instead of just showing you definition to start with, let's work in the natural example. Then I will show you definition, and then I will show you a pre dimensional picture. Okay, so to be able to merge polydops, we need to have two d dimensional polydops that satisfy certain problems. So for the first polydop, we need to require that there is at least one simple expansion. So let's say it's F, and let's um, label the vertices by U1 up to U2. Actually, the order does make a difference. If you Right, F in a different order, uh, the, the outcome can be different. That's actually good because you get more from the desired problems. So, in any case, so that's a condition on the first polydope, it must have a simple facet. So, the second polydope must have a simple vertex, so a vertex that has two neighbors. So, let's again label them by U1 prime up to U2 prime. And so two-dimensional example might be not interesting, right? Because every edge it is a simplex and every vertex is a simple neighbor on the left. So let's assume that the right can merge those two polygons and F is my simplex asset and B prime is my simple vertex. Okay, so to apply that merging operation, first of all, I need to do some preparation. So I need to make sure that F is very large compared to the rest of my polygon. So what do I mean by that? So first of all, I'm applying some projective transformation to my P1 that makes sure that the following happens. So F is a simplex facet, right? So it has exactly T adjacent facets, which I'm going to denote by H1 and H2. So my projective, the goal of my projective transformation is to make sure that so F, the affine calls of F and the neighboring facets form a simplex. So usually these simplex goes this way. So the goal is to make sure that it goes there. So the goal is to apply projective transformation so that after that transformation, my entire polytope is contained 
in the syllabus determined by F and then data plus. And it's very well known that such transformation exists. So now, once I have that syllabus, I can look at V prime and its neighbors. They also form symbols. And so then there is an alpha transformation that will make this simplex congruent to that. So I take that alpha transformation and apply it to V2. Okay, so what can I do now? So now this simplex that I, um, is a sub polytope of V2. And what I can do is I can just replace this simplex with P1. And so what we get, we call the merge of P1 and P2 along F. So, okay, so that's an example. So let, here is definition that I kind of already told you. So again, we start with two dimensional polygons. One has a simple expensive, and the other one has a simple vertex. Uh, we're trying to merge them and to create a new polygon, which we're going to denote by that symbol. And so to do that, you look at F and its adjacent facets. We apply a projective transformation that take the alpine house of F and the adjacent facets into a simplex in a way that the image of P1 is contained in that simplex. And then once we have that simplex, I'm going to denote so the vertices of that simplex, so of course the vertices of F plus one additional vertex that I'm going to denote by D. And then so once I have that simplex, I can look at E prime and its neighbors. They also become simplex, apply an alpine transformation that takes uh, that makes those two simplices congruent, and then Okay, so this simplex is a sub polytope of P2. So just replace that part of P2 with P1. And here is a picture that I should read. I already formed those projective transformations to make sure. So B is not part of P1. B is just that simplex that contains P1. And here is my P2. So I already made sure that that simplex and this one are not congruent. So now I really just replace uh, this part of P2 with P1, and that's what I do. Okay, so why is this iteration interesting? Because it turns out that if you feed, if you input, if both of those polydops are D minus I superficial I simple, then so is the merge. Also, it's not hard to check that if, say, okay, so if P1 is a simplex, then the result is just P2. If P2 is a simplex, then merge is just P1. But if neither of them is a simplex, the merge will have more vertices than P1 and also than P2, so it's a new volume. And so, so if, so again, the, the reason it's, Convenient for us is because if our input consisted of D minus I simplicial I simple polytops, uh, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, that's good. Then the merge is also D minus I simplicial I simple. Okay, and so let's try to apply this result. And so one kind of almost immediate application is that now we can create infinite families of D minus I simplicial I simple D dimensional polygons almost for every radius of I and D as long as D is at most A. So the two pairs of I D that we still can handle are three A and five A, but as long as I D satisfies them, those inequalities and is not one of those two pairs, we can create infinite families of. D minus I simplicial I simple polygons. And so let me sketch the proof. So, for instance, let's say you want to create um, four simplicial pre simple seven polygons. So, what do we do? So, we start with two, three, one. So, we know that two, three, one is 
forces would help pretty simple. Now we also have our demi cube, seven dimensional demi cube, which is pretty simple, or more simple, but so it's dual is for simple show pretty simple. The, so the first one has a simple facet, in fact, quite a few of them. The second one has simple vertices, again, in fact, quite a few of them. And so we converge. And so now the resulting polytope is again for simple show pretty simple. And the beauty of this polytope is that it has both a simple facet with a simple vertex. And so now we can use that polygon and merge it with itself in the genetic types to create them. And in the other cases, in the focus factors. Okay, here's another application. So if you look at any polygon P and you look at the dual polygon, there are three flavors that are anti isomorphic. So there is map that reverses in So you'll say that the polytop is sub-dual if actually the lattice of P and the face lattice of P star are also isomorphic. So some known examples, simplex is always like that. There is a polytop called multiplex. So these are also sub-dual. Well, so those two simple show, two simple four polygons have a symmetric uh, M vector, so they're adding that. Not all of them are um, some dual, but some of them are so presently for themselves. You can ask the question of so for each values of IMT, can we find cell dual? Dimensional polygons that are also I solution. And so, our second application is that again, uh, we can produce, so as long as I is minus four, we can produce an infant family of self dual I solution to I dimensional polygons. And of course, by you all see they're also I solution. <laughs> There is another application. So you can ask, well, so what's the smallest number of vertices needed for polygon to say the D minus two simple symbol? Okay, so with simplex is of course the minimizer, but if you discard the simplex, what is the smallest number of vertices uh, you can have? So we do have some answers in small dimensions, but definitely not. And small means like five. Four. But so in the higher dimensions, at least we can explicitly construct a particular D minus two simple show two simple dimensional polygon, a D minus three vertices, and the polygon has in total two two D minus one plus one facets, and uh, two of them are actually simplices, two of them are Two of the vertices are simple vertices, but there is also a cross polytopal facet. So here is a picture in dimension three. So you can say, well, there are many more than one cross polytopal facet. Uh, it's a coincidence because so all other facets, in addition to those I described, actually there are tons of two simplices. In dimension two, it happens to look like a cross polytopal. In any case, so by using these particular Oh, no. You can actually produce quite a few D minus two simple show to super polygons in every dimension. And so, more precisely, so at the moment we can show that. So, if you give me D, that's at least four, and you give me M, so want the number of vertices to be up to M. So, there are at least exponentially many D minus two simple show to simple D polygons. And again, so the way the book works is essentially you start with the Spanish and then you merge it with, with itself. But if you reorder vertices of your simple spots at the end, you order the neighbors of the simple vertex, you actually can produce quite a few all different polls. That's it. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much for your time.